I haven't seen the Metacritic scores, but I woke up today and I was checking Twitter and all I was seeing was, you know, everybody was going crazy about Astrobot. Okay, so, oh shit. I mean, everybody was saying that Astrobot was good, but damn, I knew that the reviews were good just based on the way people were tweeting about it, but damn, brother. 94 with 111 critic reviews? Damn, damn, Astrobot is out here doing it. What was Rebirth? 92, oh my God. Fucking Astrobot has topped Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Yo! You know, if you got the PlayStation 5, when it first came out, you know, it came with that Astro's Playroom game and everybody liked it. Everybody was like, yo, I would love to see a full game of this. And here it is. And I think it's safe to say, guys, I'm just gonna throw it out there. Goodbye, little big planet. <laughs> you know, for a while during the PlayStation 3 going into PlayStation 4 era, it really seemed like Sony was trying to push Sackboy as like their, you know, their, their platforming mascot. But I think Astrobot just secured that spot. Astro is the new PlayStation mascot. Crash whom? Bro, the, the crash thing hurts my soul because I don't know if y'all heard or not, but apparently Activision was working on Crash Bandicoot 5 and Crash Bandicoot 5 was gonna be a, a team up game with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon and they canceled it. They canceled it. I don't care how anything else sold, brother. If you put Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon in the same game, that shit, I can't, I just have a hard time believing that shit would not have sold. So yeah, that, 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 that crushed my soul a little bit, chat. That crushed my soul a little bit. Here's the IGN review, Astrobot review. Let's see what, let's see what IGN has to say about it. For 30 years, Sony has given us a vast library of top quality PlayStation games. But I tell you, man. I, I'm, I've always said art style is king. Art style over resolution, art style over graphic settings. This game looks good. I just love the way it looks, the, the animation, everything. Games, But there's never been a mascot platformer among them to rival the heights that Nintendo's Mario regularly reaches. Crash mm -hmm. Bandicoot tried, Jack and Daxter had a decent run, even Knack had a go, bless him. Now though, a true contender has arrived. Packed with dozens of colourful levels and experimental abilities, Astro's latest outing thrusts him onto centre stage. Nice. Joined by a supporting cast of PlayStation's past hit. See, this is awesome because that's exactly how i was feeling before this game came out i was like playstation has always wanted their own mario obviously right and they've tried with other characters they tried with Sackboy. boy uh, i think they maybe were gonna kind of try with knack <laughs> i'm not really sure but now it it feels like they actually have something that could rival mario now in order for that to happen there would need to be you know three or four of these big blockbuster uh highly acclaimed astrobot games in a row in my opinion but apparently this is just a really really good start based on uh the review scores i'm seeing bursting to the scenes with charm astrobot is an inventive nostalgia fueled platformer of the highest order i love it look at all the different Astrobot versions. I love how they use the PlayStation characters and characters from like really well-known IPs. Big thing I think it has going against it is it's only like a 12 hour game. Well, I mean, based on the reviews, it, you know, if it's a quality 12 hours, I don't think anybody will complain. And I think you're much better off leaving an audience wanting more than wearing out your welcome. I think we can all agree on that. I think there is kind of like a, a trend to move away from like those big games that take you know random example you know six or seven or eight years to develop you know and then it only lasts like eight days or some shit i think that this is actually uh the the right and smart way to release a game you you best believe that sony's gonna do everything they can to signal boost this to kind of like push concord out of the news cycle they're tired of getting dunked on. But I, I love this juxtaposition though. I love it because you look at what just happened a week ago with Concord. I think it's funny that as we put Concord, you know, to rest, as we shovel the dirt onto Concord's grave, Astrobot is being birthed 
out into the wild and hopefully sony will you know learn their lesson like hopefully sony will see this and say okay this is what we shouldn't do this is what we should do this is what gamers don't want this is what gamers do want you know by birthing novel stages full of visual flourish that never cross the line into becoming mere novelties. Mm. A handful of the many standouts are a time-bending casino, a Japanese bathhouse inspired level with a humorous sponge system that's soaked in fun, and a smart uh, level fun. in which the floors and walls dynamically shift depending on whether a day or night button has been pressed. Oh, that last that's one cool. in particular features a fantastic use of 3D space, while also feeling like a page torn straight out of the Fez playbook. Yeah. Oh, I love this. It really does. It really does look like PlayStation has finally found like their own Mario. Legitimately. I think the character's perfect too. I think it's a good, I think it's a perfect mascot for Sony. It's a lovable character. The team behind the character is incredibly talented. They just seem to be so good at making platformers. The music is a consistent delight throughout. <laughs> That soundtrack scores. That's great because one thing about Astro's Playroom that I remember is liking the audio design. Like I loved the music that played. I don't remember it super well, but I remember like the little the little Astro Bot theme song, the menu music, uh, and I, I remember that the vibe in the worlds was really fun. But I do think that if you want a platformer that's gonna rival like like what Nintendo puts out you're gonna need like a banging soundtrack because that really elevates it to the next level so to hear that the music is good is i think that's going to be really important uh for a franchise like this it ensures a constant supply of surprises throughout astrobot's roughly nine hour duration and some of those big okay so it says roughly nine hours so i'm guessing that 12 hours for this game would be like maybe completionist i still think nine hours is okay it, it does sound a little short when you compare it to other franchises or like the competition that this game is, is probably going to face. I can't remember how long the Little Big Planet games were. Uh, I still think for the first game, a solid nine hours is better than a mid 20 hours. I take I take a solid nine any day. Pause. Guys, please. Let's let's just be mature. OK, you know what I meant. The twin frog gloves are a particular favorite with their sticky tongues flinging out to provide a grapple swing oh, option. Oh, that's They're so also cool. spring loaded, meaning any incoming projectiles can be sent back from whence they came, exploding in an enemy's face. Smart. I also very much enjoyed the mouse mechanic, which mouse. reduces you down to a super small size, oh, effectively okay, turning okay. on Toy Story mode that lets you clamber up oversized shelves and leaves in search of secrets. I don't know, guys. Like, should I stream this game? Cunning disguise will fool any enemy guard. Oh, he's got his signature pistol with the silencer. There initially doesn't appear to be a great range in enemy types. Sure, mm. some are coated in different colors of paint or dressed to fit in with their surroundings, but they are all vanquished via the same few fundamental jump and hit combos. Later yeah, the, the Astro's Playroom game was relatively simple with like enemy design and like difficulty and how you dealt with enemies. So obviously like, you're not looking for Dark Souls or anything like that, right? But a little bit more enemy d diversity would be great for this game. They wanted it to be really accessible for everyone, I presume. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is going to be the type of game that that appeals to a younger audience as well. I, I don't think that they need to do anything to make the difficulty super hard or make it inaccessible. Just, you know, add some variety in there so that it doesn't get boring as you go through it. Boss mechanics that make the boss fights feel diverse not necessarily very difficult i think would be enough probably as characters from playstation's vast library of games have made their way into astro's world in the form of other bots for example you'll rescue everyone's favorite tactical espionage action hero from the unfamiliar surroundings of creamy canyon a desert oh that's awesome a wasteland dressed in sprinkles that's a far cry from the steel and snow of shadow moses many of the playstation characters appear as short charming cameos but a handful play fully fledged supporting roles yeah that's smart though uh like having the you know the kratos bot and maybe like the crash bot or whatever making them the npcs that you interact with characters and ips that you already care about instead of having to create new characters and try to make them interesting as npcs i think that's very smart to do
<laughs> his introduction sees you wield his ice-infused leviathan axe and take on the role of the exiled Spartan himself in a thrilling change of pace. The frosty blade- That's so cool. That's so cool. The gacha machine mm -hmm. mechanic makes a particularly enjoyable return, providing a satisfying way to spend the thousands of coins you'll collect. I've been saying this forever. Don't get rid of loot boxes. Just make the loot box only purchasable with an in-game currency that you earn. People love loot boxes. Like opening them is so fun and wondering what you're going to get is so fun. And as a streamer, it makes great content for me. So yeah, please put it in games more for me. I arrived at the end credits after nine hours, but had only collected 206 out of a possible 301 bots on my journey. There's wow. plenty to do after the main levels are done, including finding the remainder of the crew, building out the rest of the hub base, and unearthing new secrets among the stars. Mm. There's so much in fact that it took me another nine hours, so 18 in total to 100% Astrobot, and acquire- I think that's reasonable especially since they're not charging $70. These short sprints are littered with fast moving objects, numerous enemies, and precise gaps to hop across that are designed to trip you up. Throw a complete lack of checkpoints into the mix as well, and these are easily some of the toughest tasks in Astrobot, with a Good. final level that's a real tough nut to crack. It's a that's awesome. I wonder if this game will be popular in the speedrunning community. You know, like platformers tend to do really well, you know, in the speedrunning community. I wonder, I wonder where Astrobot will, will fall in that. I'm kind of curious. Team Asobi has crafted a mascot platformer that goes near enough toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nintendo's best efforts. And that's about as high a compliment as I can give it. Wow. That's awesome. Definitely makes me want to play the game. And one other thing about this review that I'll point out is they said that, you know, the game is capable of making you feel things. Uh, but it's typically not through like any nuance in the writing. It's typically through finding collectibles in the levels. But I think that as this franchise grows and people get more and more like connected to Astro Bot as a character, they'll be able to do some really good stuff like that if they want to. But this is great. I think this is a great IP for Sony. It's a huge W for them, especially coming off of Concord. Hopefully the whole thing with Concord is from the Jim Ryan era, which is over and done with. We're, we're on the tail end of that shit now. Maybe Herman Holtz and uh, what is it, Hiroki Totoki? Hopefully with those two in charge, uh, you know, we get more stuff like Astrobot. That's what I hope. That's what I hope. Astrobot really is the video game equivalent of venturing through Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, Creamy a delightful Canyon. concoction of experimentation and joy just 